activo con quien está. Good evening and welcome to the September 27th Planning and Zoning Commission. This is the village of Sunbury. Would you please join me in a moment of silent prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance? Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll we'll call. Mayor St. John. Here. Mr. Gokenauer. Here. Mr. Lawrence. Here. Mr. Riba. Here. Mr. Elliott. Here. Ms. Miller. She's absent this evening. Uh, we are going to start with a public hearing this evening. This is a public hearing considering Mormon Investments LLC 720 Kintner Parkway for variances. The applicant has requested variances for parcel number 417-131-020-11000 as part of a building expansion project. They're requesting variances as follows. Reduce required parking space count and eliminate curbing requirement. Would the applicant like to present any information? Uh, Mayor St. John, we should swear everybody in that's going to. Okay. Apply first. If there's anybody that uh, wishes to testify on behalf or against uh, this variance request as part of the public hearing, please stand, raise your right hand, prepare to be swear sworn in. Thank you. Hello, oh, sir. Good evening. Good evening. And actually, if I may interrupt again, I'm Vic Whitney uh, on behalf of the, the zoning commission representing them as the attorney. Um, I just want to mark, since we are on the record in this public hearing, mark for identification purposes a couple of documents as exhibits to be contained with the record, if that's all right with you. So um, the first one, which we'll mark as exhibit A, is a multiple page document, which includes the variance application that was received on September 7th, 2021. Uh, the narrative that goes there with, uh, the legal description, a copy of the uh, site plan, as well as the public notice, uh, who public notice was given to, and the proof of notice uh, that was served upon those persons and entities. Uh, so we'll mark that as exhibit A. And then I have a, another submittal documents here that I believe you're gonna speak on today or someone will be. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's a multiple page document again, which includes a site plan, uh, floor plans and elevations of the building, photographs of the proposed structure. Um, and we will mark that as exhibit B. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Um, first of all, when I Lawrence Mormon Mormon Investments. First of all, when I built that building back in 1920, 2020, uh, personally, I had very little to do with it. I hired an architect and I hired a construction company, and I was never in this building. Never in front of you for any reason whatsoever. They took care of everything. And from what I understand back then, it was a very easy thing to do. All I did was food things and walk into the building. Last week in October 2011. Okay. So all of this stuff is new to me. It is understandable and ununderstandable. I would like to know if I can ask a question first about the original approvals that are noted on uh, all the drawings that I have back in my office, but this is a small copy thereof. On this drawing, it shows for future 
units three, four, five, and six, which is basically what I intend to do. And I would like to know, since it was approved back then, why are we going through all of this in such detail now? What I'd like to do is maybe defer our answer until we're out of public hearing and we'll have the applicant present and then we can go through uh, the information as we go up for discussion. Yes, sir. So if you want to go ahead and continue with your presentation, submit whatever information and testimony you want in support of your variance application, uh, we'll handle that part of the public hearing and then we'll be going into a, a public meeting after that. And, and at that time, perhaps some of your questions can be addressed. But this is the opportunity for you now to present uh, the information you want to be presented in connection with your variance application request. Does that make sense? Not really, because if the question were answered in the way I think it should be answered, the rest of it is mute. Well, again, we're in the public hearing on your variance application. Understand. In, 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 okay. in accordance with the, with the zoning code. So go ahead and present on that. Okay. Uh, so we are. We are responding to the comment response letter, starting with uh, reviewing comments like C100. Is that what we're doing? Well, no, this is exclusively about your request to not have curbing and the parking count issue. That'll be an agenda item for later in the meeting, the other items that you just brought up. Memorandum page two says C102, the estimates for quantities included in reference. Well, that's the one I'm going to right now. Reference to the screwed concrete curb, temporary code does not permit extruded curb. Curb shall be either O dot type Sir, or type I can't really hear you. You can speak up Building here, should on, yeah. Is it on? There's a green light, yes, not. No, there's a green light. Um, are you, you just speak loud for me? Sure, are okay. you sure it's on? Are you sure that it's on? Did you turn? Yeah, she, she, C102 has to do with curbing, and it says about O dot type two or type six. and as far as I'm concerned, from notes from my engineers, my answer to that is ODOT type six curb is called out. And uh, if this note is correct, it's called out in the paperwork that they sent to you. So we agree to ODOT six. Is that what you need to hear? Um, so that we. Then there is no need to apply for a variance if you agreed to install the curbing. Please, please remember that all of this stuff started like a week or two before September 7th when your date was to put stuff in for this meeting. We had very little time to get to this meeting. At that time, we didn't have curbing. In between then and now, in discussions with my folks, We've decided curbs are not a problem. Okay. So you could withdraw, withdraw that variance request. Withdraw that variance curb. This is Aaron Heidinger. Um, Andy Heidinger. Um, yeah, the, uh, the variance request, the way it was stated to us is that the entire thing had to be curved um, and there's precedent throughout the industrial park that the back of the buildings aren't curved. So it's just a, an official ask that we're not curving the back parking lot. So it's in, in accordance with the way it is today, it has been for 20 years and it, that's uh, just consistent with the development as well as a whole. The parking, as far as the parking variants, um, Mr. Mormon spoke to this when we had a preliminary review. Um, he doesn't need additional parking spaces um, to fulfill the build out. It was stated that maybe potentially could help. Um, putting in any parking spaces is detrimental to him building out. 
for, for approval, it's going to 1999, 2000, the original approval. So um, we show some parking spaces, but as listed on the cover sheet, it, it doesn't meet the full um, zoning for the approval, which is listed. But he needs 33, and I believe we're showing up only six total now. Um, flipping the parking spaces reduced another one. Um, so that's the parking variance and the curbing variance as, uh, as it is to be asked for officially. Did that answer your question? I think so. Yeah. yeah. So you do need the variance for you some of the curbing in the back. For, uh, for the curbs, because we've seen no reason for having curbs in the back. Okay. Right? And number two, we need a variance for the number of parking spaces for two reasons. Number one, there isn't room for them. Uh, we've added some, we don't come up to what you say we need per square foot, but for example, we have 3,600 square feet in the main building and we have three people working there, okay? In the other side, uh, on the west side, the only people will be working there and will be very dependent because it's a kind of a construction firm. They're out all the time. They come in in the morning to load up and they leave. They come in in the trucks and leave. The other uh, building would be for about 1,800 square feet of warehouse and office, and we have 1920 parking spots in the front now. So we don't see the need, and there isn't the room on the piece of property because of the truck access in the back to put more parking. And on top of that, if there isn't enough parking for somebody who might want to rent something from me, they won't rent it. So we're still asking for the variance on the curbing in the back, at the very least, and on the parking. I just want to make one clarification. The existing parking lot on the front is not curved today, and there's no plan to put curbing on so it's out. The only thing that will be curved, proposed to be curved, is the parking spaces that are along the building. Um, and that's the problem I want to answer. The parking lot on the front is not being affected or amended for this development. Anything uh, further, Mr. Mormon? Uh, I'm sorry, folks, I'm a little confused because that was going off the sheet as opposed to the three items that we had. Because these look like questions that uh, Mr. Parkinson wanted to answer tonight. No problem. We can get into that into the uh, the public uh, meeting portion if you'd prefer. But I, I think we've heard your uh, generally what you're proposing. Um, you still want the two variances. Yes. Um, and if that's all you have, I'm going to open it up for public comment, and I don't believe we're going to have any, but I'd like to ask. <laughs> Is there any el anyone else that would like to speak for or against this uh, the proposed variances? Okay, I'd like to close, uh, make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. Second by Greg Elliott. Discussion? Roll call. Uh, Mr. Gokenauer? Yes. Mr. Lorenz? Yes. Mr. Riva? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mayor St. John? Yes. We're here. Thank you. Well, you <laughs> We're going to get right to that. We'll okay. get to it. You're next, you're next on the agenda and next after that as well. So <laughs> the, the, simple, the simple answer, Mayor, is no, they, have, they were not passed. That's correct. So, yeah, he, just so he understands. Correct. Correct. And we have uh, so we have you on the agenda twice now, and we're going to consider um, commission review of Mormon's investment LLC for 720 Kittner Parkway variances. The applicant has requested variances for said parcel as part of building the expansion project. They are requesting variances as follows. Reduce required parking space count and eliminate curbing requirement. And... I believe we've already heard your presentation on that. We generally understand what you're asking for. You don't want to put part. You don't want to put curbing on 
the existing parking spaces that exist, only the new parking that you're adding. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And uh, you're asking for a variance from what our code calls 33 parking spaces to 27 parking spaces. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. All right. And that is what we have up for debate um, and discussion. And what I'd like to be able to do is turn this over to our paid professionals, Mr. Piles or Mr. Parkinson. Would you guys mind providing your subjective expertise? Um, I would just add that there are some pictures of other businesses in the in the industrial park, uh, probably built before the current code, but uh, we do and have granted variances for curbing before. Um, and I believe with the mix of office and warehousing space that um, the requested 27 slots should be sufficient to handle the parking needs of the businesses that would be in the building. Um, just one clarification we split the spaces according to the department's suggestion. So that removes one of the total of 26. 26. So, so, okay. Mr. Mormon, if you didn't need a variance from parking, would you put in those extra five? Pardon? If you did not need a variance from parking, would you put in those extra five that you're proposing? I have no idea where I'd put them. Like, that's sort of my question. If you don't need them, would you put them in? No. Okay. So to the commission, uh, to the commissioners, I'll note that Steve and I have had a series of conversations offline regarding how we calculate parking uh, in the industrial areas of, of the uh, town when the buildings are mixed use. These buildings are a combination of office and warehouse. And based on the drawings that were provided in support of this major site plan approval, when you tally up the warehouse space and you tally up the office space and you apply our parking requirements per those individual usages, I think the number is 21, and he's got 21 or 22 parking spaces today, which would negate the need. And, and, and the 22 or 21 is with his expanded facility, not just his existing. So it's, it's his 9,900 square foot facility as he's showing it being used today in a portion warehouse and uh, office. And therefore, if, if that's the proper way to calculate parking, and I won't say that it is or it isn't, but that's the way we've done it. Um, then he has adequate parking on site today for his for his 9,900 square foot expanded facility, and a variance wouldn't be required. Just for clarification on our code, even though it's a single structure, the is it the square footage within that single structure that each parking requirement is calculated? That's how I calculate it. Okay. Yes, the usage within the building. And so there's a, I'm just going to make up some numbers because I didn't bring my little, all my calculations. But if there's 3,000 square feet and 300 of it is office and 2,700 of it is, is yeah. warehouse, uh, office space, I think, is one per 300 square feet. So we'd only need one for the office. And warehouse is one per thousand, I think. So we don't need three. So that's four total for that 3,000 square foot. I think what they did when they were trying to determine what their parking was is they took their 3,000 divided by 300 and came up with 10. We didn't do the math. That, that didn't anything Steve or I uh, offered as, as, uh, as guidance. But I think that's where, the, in, in my mind, that's where there may be a, a little bit of a, a miss. Okay. Um, and so... I'm asking a question as much as I'm making a statement here this evening that, you know, am I calculating it as you would like me to calculate it? Uh, the code is not really, doesn't get into that refinement of how exactly those things are to be done. Um, but if, if that's a reasonable approach to identifying uh, the parking, uh, then he has enough now. <laughs> So we wouldn't need the variance then is what you're it saying? Would, it would not based on what they've presented. Okay. Uh, prior to what they submitted tonight, I have not, this is the first I've seen 
the revised plans is tonight. I haven't looked at those, but I presume that the building didn't change. Yeah, so. Okay. Just further subjectivity, I've driven by this building probably a hundred times in the past six months. And I've never seen, you know, more than like five cars in the parking lot. And and we don't disagree. Um, but the the poster child for this is the O'Connell's furniture. Right. You know, I wasn't here back then, but I understand they came in and they swore up and down. They don't need all that parking out there. And then when they sold it to the first person, they didn't have enough parking based on how they wanted to use it. And so we, you know, we identify our code based on what it could be or should be, you know, ultimately used as based on what the code says, as opposed to the fact that, well, my business only has two people in, in the building, so I only need two parking places. We don't generally look at it that way, but, uh, but it does, um, and the code goes on, and I'm rambling now, but there are sections of the parking code that if someone wants to put in less parking, they have to reserve an amount of parking that's appropriate and we'll kind of test it for a year and see how it looks. And if after a year of testing, it's obvious they need more parking, they have to put in the parking that they should have put in. If, they've, if it's uh, proven true that they don't need all that parking, then they're allowed to uh, not put it in. But based on the delineation of the building type, like you said, office versus warehouse. Should we even do, I guess it's adequate now is what you're saying. I, again, I just wanna. It meets code. It meets code. As I, as, I, as I interpret the code. The existing parking you have. Thank you. 22? 21. 21? Yeah. So I can't remember off the top of my head, but it, I either calculated it out at 20 or 21. So it's based on the way I calculate the parking requirements. And so it, what about the curbing then? I mean, I know we don't have curbing in, in the industrial park. So the curbing is, uh, you know, I, I don't have a an opinion one way or the other. Um, obviously, sometime in the past, there was a belief that uh, we needed um, yeah, I don't know. I, just, I don't want to go down that path, but we felt that curbing was important in our in our developments, and we put this requirement in. I don't know when that was or whatever. If they're not touching the parking lot out front, I don't know that the buildings necessarily then trigger everything that has to be done in the way of, you know, putting curbs on existing parking lots. That would be difficult um, because typically when you do this, you set your curb top to be sort of at grade, then you cut your parking lot down behind it. Now you've already got the parking lot, so you're building your curb up. So now you got this goofy little curb that's kind of sticking above the ground and Makes it a lot more difficult to manage and, and mess with. So, so um, it's, it's a more of an aesthetic thing. It's not like for water runoff. Or... I think I think it's I think it's aesthetic for yeah. It's not for runoff. I believe it's for aesthetics. It's for um, you know how often do we see in anywhere for that matter where if pavement is not curbed or there are not parking blocks, the tire ruts all along the edge. The edge of those pavements are uh, if they don't have the, the lateral support from a concrete curb, they're easily mushed and, and pushed off. And so it's just it's just to help enhance the pavement area and the, and the grass areas by not by controlling where the vehicles go and things of that nature. So hypothetically, if we're saying, let's say we, we would withdraw the parking variance request, is that the way this would happen? There'd be no need. We're not going to improve by, something. By, that... by the way, I would calculate it. Okay. I trust you. You're a stickler <laughs> when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> More of a stickler than we are sometimes. Well, is, is, Mr. Mayor, do you like to say I'm the hired help? 
And so I provide <laughs> I provide guidance and, and suggestions, and I defer to to staff and to the commissioners on on those uh, positions I offer. If, if the parking uh, variance is not needed, are you going to still add the five or thereabout parking spaces that are on the east side of the building? That's a good question. I, I don't know that I can answer that on the top of my head because more lost space for putting in more buildings. That's it. If I had to want to do expand on that, I got seven three years old. This would be the last thing I do. Um, but I can't really answer that question with that. Maybe we'll jump topics to the curbing. Um, I'll be the first one to say it. We've we've we have developments in the industrial park that do have curbing. We also have parcels in the industrial park that do not. Uh, as far as the commission stance um, in this particular development is, is there a strong sentiment one way or another? Oh, if it, it almost ties together, right? Because if you're not going to put in new parking, there's no reason to add curbing, right? That's kind of the way I see it. It's not the way the code says it, but I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying not, not code reasons. I'm just saying the way we just were talking about it, right? There's no real reason to put in curbing, especially on an existing parking space, if we're not going to put in additional parking spaces. Mr. Yeah. Elliott, yeah. He, he's putting in a sea of asphalt in the back of his building for maneuvering right. trucks in the back, and that, that would require curbing as well back there. Any any asphalted but pavement the area would, would require, require the code would require then that there they'd be curbed. I would also remind the commissioners, not that you need reminding, but I believe that you passed a variance not too long ago for Newman roofing to waive some of the curbing in the back of his facility behind it, the warehouse area and the uh, garage area. But his was all gravel, correct? No. Back At Newman's, the back of it was gravel? The back of it was gravel from before the building started. Are you talking about your property? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with yours. I'm talking about somebody else's. I, I can't I can't uh, that's Newman, a good question, Mr. Newman was hard <laughs> surface in the front. Yeah. And he curved it all yep. because of runoff. <laughs> And gravel in the back, okay. no curbs because technically less runoff. Okay, I didn't recall that he got a variance for gravel as well. Okay, I believe so. I don't recall. It would be my guess. Let me check my notes. Your thoughts? If it was a new build, I would say yes for all the curbing, but since it's not it's an existing building with an expansion, no, and it, even the back of it, I think it's still consistent with the parkway. I would agree with that. I, it's it's an existing building with additions added to it, so and, uh, not near as important. Ten degree. Yeah. So, Mr. Whitney, no pressure. Uh, what do we do here <laughs> when it comes to you know, uh, pressing forward legally? Well, I, there's you know there's the application that is before the board. Mm -hmm. We're at the commission right now, so um, I think if there's going to be a, a withdrawal of part of that, then the applicant's going to need to make that request to, to do that, and then I think we can go forward with the other aspect of it. But after that, the board's the commission's really considering what's in front of it right now. Comments that Mr. Parkinson? No, no. no. Yeah. Yeah. As far as the withdrawal for the parking space count, is verbal followed up with written after the meeting? Okay. I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, Mr. Mormon, is it your intention to withdraw your variance request for the reduced required parking space count? Yes. Okay. And uh, would you or your engineers or design team follow up uh, in writing after this meeting on that? Yes. Okay. So we have a variance uh, to consider and that is eliminate the curbing requirement for Mormon Investments LLC 720 Kintner Parkway variance. And I would move to approve a variance request. I'll a second. second by Greg Elliott. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Lawrence. Yes. Mr. Riva. Yes. Mr. Elliott. Yes. Mayor St. John. Yes. Mr. Gokenauer. Yes. Variance for the curbing is approved. All right. And this is the last agenda item you're on here with us tonight, Mr. Mormon. Right now we have the commission's review of Mormon Investments LLC commercial and industrial site plan and building for 720 Kintner Parkway. The applicant has submitted an industrial site plan and building application to construct an expansion of his current building by 6,257 square feet. And I think this is, I think you had some questions at the beginning. I took a few notes, but what I had heard was uh, it was your impression that there was some approval in 2011 that may have permitted you to not go through this process. Is that Maybe you could add some clarification on there and then we'll get into our discussion. Okay. So when this subject comes up again. Um, there seems to be some question about if this plan was approved with the proposed condition number, does that mean that those proposed conditions were approved then? I don't have the approval uh, from 2011. I know that we've had other, how do I say? Sunbury Christian Church, for example, we approved a building plan with kind of what I would call phase one. We also approved kind of the expansion footprint, but there's still steps in the process the church would have to go through if they were going to actually add the additions onto the building. It wasn't like you can just go ahead and go forward. So maybe these are correlated. Uh, Mr. Parkinson or Mr. Piles, any insight into the 2011 approval? Okay, I'll, I'll start. I guess Steve started last time. So we have investigated this uh, this fact. Um, the application back in 2010, when it, whenever the initial whenever the initial application came in, uh, it references only the existing building within the application, showing uh, noting 3,200 square feet or whatever whatever it is. Um, it's the drawings that were submitted um, as part of the major site plan uh, that showed the future buildings on it. But the application itself did not include the future buildings. Um, also, our code, uh, there, and I'm getting out of my lane a little bit, I believe there's a stipulation that if construction activities have not begun within 18 months, the approval is void. So clearly the uh, future buildings were not constructed within 18 months of that approval. And so one could read the code to suggest that even if they were approved under the original approval, that approval is void now because they weren't started within 18 months of, of that approval. So therefore we don't believe that anything shown on that drawing outside of the building um, it was approved as part of the original approval. Okay. I'm clear on that. Uh, we approved section one it, that was applied for hypothetically if the other sections were approved or even referenced, that would be void at this point. Now, this is where we're at, and this seems like the appropriate place. That's true. Yeah. Okay. And it's understandable. I don't have an objection to that. It makes sense. Okay. I'm good. So, would you like to discuss anything else uh, related to the particular project? 
This is for the major site approval. Is that correct? Uh, so my comment, my comment letters generally are why they're talking. My comment letters are are meant are meant for the commissions. Uh, they're meant for the commission. They're meant for the applicants, engineer, or, and architect, uh, and therefore the applicant. So primarily, when I write these and draft these, uh, for they're they're with you in mind to point out. Um, areas of the uh, major site plan that was prepared where I feel uh, it is uh, deficient or non-compliant with the code. Uh, and um, it really is never my intent that we hash this out line by line uh, in your meeting. There isn't enough time in your meetings to, to do that. These are these comments are, are hashed out between the engineer and myself and the applicant. Uh, when time permits prior to this meeting, but uh, as Mr. Mormon noted, he was under a great time constraint to get everything in in time for this meeting. We didn't have, uh, my schedule did not permit an immediate review. I was a, a week into getting to it. That didn't provide Mr. Haydinger with much time to, to get a response, but kudos. I've just been glancing at this tonight. Got a hell of a lot of work done in a very short order. So thank you, Mr. Haydinger. Um, it's my intention to work with Mr. Haydinger and Mr. Mormon in the coming week to um, uh, uh, kind of go through these comments, make sure they, they satisfy my concerns and those that don't, uh, maybe we understand why I don't think they do. I would like to just point out, I think just uh, uh, one, one item I think that would be of, of interest uh, to the commission. Most of this other stuff that you don't care about, I don't think. Uh, I do, but but I don't think you do. Um, I point out that the architectural plans, and I'm glad the, the uh, architect is here this evening to, to help me with this, because again, this isn't my lane either. The architectural plans call out that the exterior walls for the, for the building additions are PMB wall panels. I assume PMB means pre-engineered metal building. Uh, our code, and so I, I then also assume that that means, and I put it in quotes, metal sheets, metal siding, right? Uh, our code requires today, and it may not have required at the time that Mr. Mormon built his first building, natural materials on all exterior walls of elevations that that uh, are on a public street, that face a public street, are visible from a public street, or visible from a residential district. Um, I know this is silly, but the district to the north is the high school. That's A1. A1 is a residential district. It is visible from a resident. The backside of this building is visible from a residential district. Um, so I don't know how the commission reconciles this. Um, but, uh, and, and the other part, and I think he's got some great pictures in here and some great uh, elevations. I mean, yeah, this is a great picture. If you can find his picture, it's all windows. You know, it's, I'll make up a number, except for the metal roof, which is allowed. It's gotta be 90% windows. You know, there isn't that much other material to, to put something natural in. So I, I just bring that to your attention. I don't have a good answer for that. Um, it, maybe it's a discussion point. Um, can, I, can I ask a question regarding the zoning of the school? Um, I downloaded the zoning map to just verify this. The zoning map that holds, you guys, I'm sure this village has one, but it's listed as not zoning. It's not listed as residential zoning. So that's, that's an old, that's an old map. So I'm just saying that. Is that on our village our website? website? Is that what you're website. saying? Yeah. Okay. Now, we don't. All right. So we haven't had I'm just, cool. I know okay. that you guys can hold the real ones. Well, the auditor does. That's the one we know. We, we do. That's our, okay. that's our, that's our document. Okay. Then I reference the auditor site and it's just, it's I'll start really referencing ours. Not, so the whole area that's up there is yeah. that way. So yeah. it, I know that you're going to talk about it. It's, 
of how to run a market. Like, it just doesn't play the patient point on what we can pull. Okay. Thank you. Would we discuss this now, or is it just for information purposes only? I think you had some more comments. No, that's just wanted to call out the steel building. I, that, that, you know, all the other stuff is easily addressed through engineers doing engineer things and the owner agreeing. Um, but this is a, this is an element that I know I knew would be a, a touchy subject, and the response was the owner has questions. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, uh, of course, Mr. Mormon has questions, and and yes, I, in my, I, with deference to the to the mayor, uh, yes, let's have a discussion. I I had a couple of questions non related to the steel building piece, but I I have questions on the twelve foot pavement and the twenty four foot wide on either side. On the west side, what is the twelve foot pave section? doing it's basically right up against the property line i'm sorry I didn't quite understand the question. 12, 12 foot paved section on the west side uh, so larry son has a business on that side oh, oh, that. so he has trucks and trailers that would be parked there for doing his business thank you and the usage is by that or my property 600 times in the last six months or something like that do you notice the trailers and the pickup trucks out front from time to time? Not offhand, but I, I believe you. Pickup truck out there right now. Okay. So, what I would like to do, I don't typically like them parked out front. So, between the building on the west side and the property line, I want to put a stretch of asphalt that comes off the back so that they can park that stuff there. That's what that's for. Okay. And the 24-foot wide aisle, I assume you're going to be able to address on the east side? Um, yeah, um, so if we're not building the parking spaces, there's going to be to become 24 feet. So. Okay. With the way it was, it was not. Okay. Okay. It's 22 feet now. Yeah. In the gravel, another two feet. Okay. Any any thoughts of landscaping uh, that uh, area where the trailers will be stored so they can't, they're not as visible from the street? Uh, yeah, we're not supposed to put the two trees back there. There is, it's not here. It's in my documents. As opposed to trees, I, I, I would too. I wasn't thrilled when he said trees. Well, that's because what I've seen on plants, it's not because of what I wanted to do. Yeah, and the trailers aren't that tall, yeah. so yeah. Well, that's why that's why I said landscape. So, okay. yeah. at the end, at the end of all of this, and when we go to consider this, is there an additional step for landscaping and a variance? Uh, yes, there is a um, there are landscape requirements uh, driven primarily by the fact that the residential district resides to the north uh, for some set a landscape buffer setback number of trees a number of uh, a continuous hedge or fence etc mr mormon uh, has stated he cannot put that in because the trucks will not be able to maneuver if, if his pavement can't get to within five feet of the property line his trucks won't have adequate maneuver he uh, intends to come back and i'm speaking for the applicant here next month with a request for a variance from landscape requirements that would include that setback in, in the landscaping along that northern property line. We can still have discussion. I don't want to not have the discussion, but we're not going to be considering this for approval, correct? My advice would be no. Okay. 
Right. We would want some the com comprehensive, include all the variances ahead of time to get the final approval. Be because um, the drawings have been prepared in anticipation of getting the landscape variance. So if you were to try to approve it tonight, you would have to have condition upon getting a variance and a landscape, blah, 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 blah. And it gets a little um, tangled. Yeah. And conditional point. with a variance is uh, even more tangled than what I would say a typical like engineering and legal review contingency is. Right. We're basically tying ourselves to an approval saying, listen, we're going to approve an exception to our normal process at a future meeting. Oh, and then I'll, I'll ask the applicant, his, his assistants this evening, his professionals, the application notes that you'd like to break ground in March of 2022. Is that correct? So more than that. Okay. So February to April. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm okay with that. So, so if that's true, I mean, you're not trying to break ground in November. No. An extra month to get the variance done. Once, if assuming that variance is granted, the commission can then move to approving the major site plan. We'll have a we'll have a couple more weeks now to get it to get it together to where they can actually see something that they're approving. Um, and it, it just all works so much better by waiting till next month. But the curbing is that Yeah. That was the curbing variance was approved. Yeah. Okay. yeah so so you're, 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 you don't need curbing. That was, that was approved. We've agreed you don't need a parking variance based on what you have and the building you've proposed. Uh, landscaping is still uh, an outstanding question. Um, and then I think we've, we've got the building materials uh, to, to finalize. And shoot, there was one other thing I wanted to ask. I'll remember later. That's that's fine. Yeah, those are. I'm I'm, I'm good with all that stuff. I, I just I just can't remember. Oh oh. So yeah, you know where I'm going now, don't you? So um, one of my comments was, and, and uh, Mayor, uh, if you if you noticed on on one of your trips out out that way, probably more to get to the high school and stuff, but uh, the. Uh, the driveway is is severely alligator cracked. I mean, it's it's gone. It's shot, and the parking area is probably. And I didn't get a good picture of the parking area, but uh, while it's not, it did not appear in the uh, Google Earth photos to be as bad as the driveway. I asked if the driveway could be um, well, repaved, and the answer was, "Well, we might." Uh, we'll look into that and see. I, I think uh, we we need that we need that fixed. Um, and what I'll probably do is also spend some time next time I'm in town is to drive over there and see if the parking lot looks equally as bad. Um, but uh, um, I, we might consider that to be a condition of uh, approval of the uh, site plan if if uh, the zoning official uh, believes that. No, uh, agrees with me that the uh, the driveway is in disrepair. It's a repair issue, but I have more teeth if I if I link it to this. Right, let's talk about building materials. I got lots of questions. Yeah. The, the new offices that are going to be at the front of the building, do they, if I'm not mistaken, they stick out past the existing yes. frontage? Yes, another point there. Okay, and then how close will they be to the sidewalk parking lot at that point? I don't see that as Thank you. And then my next question is, um, going off of Mr. Parkinson, the driveway going in, it is 
currently paved, but there's a section that is stone, if I'm not mistaken. The front, it's absolute front piece of concrete, then it's paved, and then it's asked, and then it's uh, gravel all the way back. But isn't there like the, an apron to the east side that is gravel? Yes. There's a little gravel that they've spread out beside the concrete oh, apron oh, because the, because the truck apron, yeah because the, the trucks uh, and that doors. encroaches into the neighbor's property if I'm not mistaken it does okay and well, I've asked that probably need I haven't I haven't looked at the replan one of one of my comments was that they widen the apron to the west and there's no curbing there correct there is no curbing. There. Okay. Which is not unusual when uh, you don't have curb roadways. Right. Okay. And then my next question is behind the current building, there's a large storage shed of sorts. Is uh, that the northeast corner? Yes. Okay. Is that going to remain or is that going to be removed after, after the removed. after the, the new warehouse? That's underneath it will be removed because that's the storage shed. Well, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work, but that'll be removed. There'll be a concrete apron comes out from the building. I, honestly, I don't remember how wide that is. Okay, that'll be extended the length of the building in both directions. Okay, again, that's to make sure that the uh, workers have something solid and it's not going to mess with them. I did that originally. Uh, then after that, just like it is now, that we asked for. There's a small apron of asphalt from the concrete out, maybe 10, 12 feet. And I did that just to make sure that when the trucks backed in, if they screwed up and didn't back in far enough, it wasn't gravel where the uh, worthless were going. Yeah. And then I just kind of had a uh, recommendation or a thought that I wanted to throw at you. If you're not going to put in the prior required six extra spaces, instead of doing the 12 foot on the west side for parking trucks and trailers, could you possibly use the east side for your trucks and trailers? And then you're not right up against your property line and there's a driveway between the vehicles and the- It is possible, I would have to ask the truck drivers because what, there isn't enough room to say back then, okay, because it's only just isn't enough room to, from the building to the driveway that you can put because they would have to be put in parallel to the building. Yep. Okay. And I'm not sure how difficult that is for those guys to do that. I would think it'd be a lot easier on a 32 foot space than it would be a 12 foot space. Is my well, point. Space they can back directly in on the off the rear. They don't have to do any movement. They just back in. So, also, wouldn't they be able to do that on the other side? Plus the traffic on the other side, potentially, right? But wouldn't they be able to do the same thing here if you don't have this curbing here? Yeah, then you would put one, two, three like that next to each other as opposed to. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing something here that didn't. Okay, I'm just I'm trying to help you. No, no, I appreciate it. Uh, could easily be put there. Uh, I'll have to see. But because of the width, that's all. And I, I didn't realize that was, that was skinnier than that. Yeah. The, the other thing is the business that uses those trucks where the materials will be stored is right there. Here. So, yeah, I I do yeah no, no, it's, it's worth looking into. I'm not going to say no to that. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, did you have anything else? Not at the moment. Okay. Any, any discussion on the building materials? I, I've got some thoughts, but I'd like to hear you guys first. Didn't we have another one come up on Kenner Parkway with well, two additional buildings? It was Newman. Right? Yeah. Well, wasn't it? Well, I, I think no. it's been the two no. buildings directly to the east of this that we've had that discussion recently. Well, we did have a little bit of a discussion 
related to the Gerling expansion, expansion. That might be what you're rem yes. remembering. Yeah. That building is mostly screened by other buildings and it's pretty, it's, it's, there's, you could question at least debate the issue of is it visible from the road or not? Right. I don't think there's much question about this one. This one is visible. Yeah. Which building are you part of? Um, the old lumber company. Oh, that, okay. They're, they're, they're expanding back in the back part of that lot. Mm -hmm. So we're saying the north side where the school is is residential. Right. So it'd be R one because it's so the other thing that does is it kicks in all the other three sides all have to be the residential right. Well, a literal reading of the code it says visible from, which one might suggest is or are the sides as well. But I don't know that we always have done that. I understand in the spirit of what it's trying to do. It's basically saying if you you know you have houses nearby, we're gonna kind of dress it up a little bit. I would say there is a, a somewhat of a tree buffer, not off the hook on the landscape stuff yet. Just want to let you know that. Yeah. All right. Well, Alan, there's also a lot of distance. If you do a lot in the landscape, that will, that will go a long way. I'll just put it to you that way. Because I, I think one uh, vantage is a pretty good job for being on the corner lot. I mean, they've done like a nice brick, I'm not asking you to re-brick everything. I would love, your building doesn't stand out to me like an eyesore at all. And it's all steel. I mean, I, I actually, I think it's well maintained. I like the amount of glass it has. <clears throat> I don't think it would make sense. I've given this a lot of thought to put brick or stone, you know, the sections coming out. Personally, I'm not opposed to this steel. Um, like to see proportionally the same amount of windows and landscape. If you can dress it up a little bit, I think we can get, personally, I can get by all of the code requirements if it looks nice, fits the area, and it doesn't look like you tried to just match our code that has changed since you put in your original building, admittedly. I don't see, yeah, I don't think we would want natural stone on the back side of that building. I don't think so, but I, I think it looks silly. What do you guys think? Depends what it's going to look like from the school as well from the back. Without knowing the landscaping plan, it's hard to tell. If you're not going to be able to see it, I don't know how much it's really going to matter. Do we have a good visual of the rear of the building? Sorry, I guess I was just sure, uh, uh, rear from the school. If you're standing on school property looking at yours, uh, I think we do. Yeah. I didn't see a, you've got one looking out toward the school. This that this one, one is the road looking behind me out in the school. These are the on the rear. rear that are behind my building. Okay. Is this the proposed rear yes. elevation that's proposed front? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's new and that's new and that's new and that's new. Yes, sir. That's the first one, right? Oh, uh, I don't yeah. Rear. yeah, 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 that'll be the rear. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you were going to become an architect, it's wrong. Okay. And the reason it's wrong is this shows no, where's the top going down to show? I would see that. I would see that here. Is that right here? Yeah, there's. You can catch it. You can see how it comes out in front of the building? Yes. Okay. If you look at the front of the strong. Mm -hmm. That's you cool. see the windows. Right. If this, if this roof is going to be the same as this roof, and that's. Mm -hmm. No, I better go check because he may have a different. No, in fact, I know it has a different. I'm sorry. I misunderstood something. The original problem with 
extending move. Because it was going to be the same as this move. Okay. As long as it can go out farther in front of the building, we have to go lower. Just because of shooting that over there. It's a little more complicated than that, but, but uh, yeah, that is the front. I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing because I'll just change the roof angle. Uh, so what you see is correct. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The roof now starts up here on on the sides and goes past this little wall that's coming up here. Does that make sense? Okay. So that way you can get now. There's an 11 foot ceiling in these offices. I don't want to keep 11 foot ceiling in these offices, so you have to raise the slanted roof to do that. And you go up to do that, and go up here to do that. If I'm being clear, I'm not sure I'm being clear. Is this roof pitching like this straight up? Like the roof hey, that same angle? It would be doing. Is it possible yes, like that. for you to give us an elevation of that is side here? Okay. To the side, so like we can that. see, yeah, so everyone can see how room. that metal is going to look. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm not talking the size of the building. Yeah. I'm talking <laughs> as I look at the building from this <laughs> angle. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can make yeah. this elevation, like a little model. Model. so we can yeah. see yeah. how that new building is going to come You're out. Exactly how it's all going to tie together. You cannot see that. Okay. Yeah, just like this here, like yeah. if it's possible. Can Cat do that? Okay. I know I'm not trying to make more work for you. I, just, <laughs> I didn't know if it was easy. Structural <laughs> Yeah. I think to I'll just jump in really quick to Rick's point. I think it's gonna be I think we need to understand the landscaping in the back to make sure that we can't see anything to make sure to be able to approve the view of what the building is gonna look like, right? Their property's landscaping. Yes. The school's landscape. Their properties, yes. Not the school's landscaping, yes. Right. The more property landscaping, yes. So I think that's the, to me, that's what we need next is to fully understand the landscaping in the back. And well, yep, exactly right. And then if we're, once we're clear with that and we understand that it's not going to be visible and, um, you know, it's, it's going to create a, a nice barrier, um, I don't see a problem approving the actual. Metal. Yeah. Knock my name over. Yes. That's the road that goes parallel to us on the school side. Uh -huh. My building is right on the other side of that. Yep. This is a huge tree over. In fact, I'm surprised I noticed how many trees around on my neighbor's property mm -hmm. back there. So this is what it looks like in the end of September. From the school to my property. Is it going to, are all, any of these getting removed? I don't intend to. Okay. So the trees are on your property then? Uh, the, the trees. Yeah, as far as I know, because there's, I don't remember if you ever read your space over there, here, but there is a state on this side and on the left side of the road. You have to go in by the people there. And they're basically in the, uh, so okay, so if we can just get if we can get confirmation that those aren't being removed, and if that meets the requirement for screening, which I looks like it does. Yeah. My question would be, what's it going to look like October to April, yeah. May, you know, when when all the leaves all fall and whatnot, is it still going to be screened? Because six months out of the year, is that going to be enough for... It won't be screened any different from any other one. 
but you're making changes so we need to update that's what our job is to do pretty close to tabling this i think we've got a little bit of work to do for the applicant uh they're going to come back with a comprehensive landscape plan um potentially requesting a variance for that landscape plan if it does not meet code and the building materials generally were okay i didn't feel like i had a really good image of what we were actually approving it's just the elevations the black and white elevations it's difficult to picture but um, I think you can get us something that's a little bit more descriptive for our next meeting. That was my question to Sean. He said he's going to try to that front elevation, mm -hmm. turn it a touch, a so we idea. can actually see what it's going to look like so versus the straight on. Yeah. yeah, and if, if there's possible to put some color to it to make it actually look like what it's going to look like, that would be awesome. No pressure. You got this. <laughs> Engineers, architects, you guys always bring it home at the last minute. Always come. You got it. Sean's like, thanks, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else for the applicant? I do move, I do move to uh, table this. I, second. second by Rick Riba. Discussion? Roll call. Uh, let's start with Mr. Riba. Yes. Mr. Elliott. Yes. Mayor St. John. Yes. Mr. Gokenauer. Yes. Mr. Lawrence. Yes. What's our next meeting? Thank you, Mr. Mormon and team. We'll see you back here next month. Thank you very much, John. Appreciate you. So you as, you, as you're leaving, uh, next month, we, we hold our meetings on the fourth Mondays of the month. And so that would be October 25th. Great. Not sure <laughs> <laughs> Not in Sunday. Is a deadline for you, Mr. Parkinson? They need to have something back to you? Um, you guys have nailed that out. Being being a revision, we'd like something no later than two weeks. But uh, Mr. Hating or two weeks before the meeting, but Mr. Hating or you and I are you and I are going to have some conversations starting probably tomorrow. The variance application. If you decide to go forward with a requesting a variance from our landscape requirements that are in the code, that would be twenty days prior to the meeting. So October fifth, Tuesday, October fifth. The the variance application would have to be in. That's got it. A one page form and a narrative. So we've got everything else. I just want to make sure with the building materials. That's something that is not necessarily a variance if we're in agreement about the screen from the back. Is I, I I thought it was a variance. It's still a variance. The building materials. I mean, it's per our code. Yeah. Natural materials, and we're considering waiving that. So I believe that's a variance request. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're clear that we're doing what we need to do. Is that fair? Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Thanks, thank gentlemen. you, gentlemen. For the next uh, item, Commission Review of Pulte Homes of Ohio LLC Minor Subdivision Lot Split Application. emh and on behalf of Pulte Homes of Ohio LLC has submitted a minor subdivision lot split application to create price plan section one and to fulfill requirements in the Planning and Zoning Commission approval previously granted to the planned residence district zoning of this property. Section one includes the primary east-west street and access easements and would be the first section purchased and developed in the subdivision. Sir, welcome. Well, thank you. Good evening. My name is Joe. I'm a parent. I have a Pulte home. All right, good deal. Uh, we did have um, both uh, the submittal, uh, the explanation um, of why uh, they want to do the lot split, and also we had some uh, review from our engineer and zoning inspector uh, as well. So anything else you'd like to add? Um, it, some of these folks may not know the exact reason for this. Maybe a brief narrative of okay. what you're looking to do. Um, we'll be purchasing, purchasing some property to develop a subdivision. This is phase one of the subdivision. So we purchase the property to purchase the property. Just 
Okay. So, so developers rarely take down the entire property in one big chunk. They take down the what they need for section one, and then as they get going, they take down what they need for section two, and they go on until ultimately they end up buying the whole whole parcel. This is 183 acres. That'd be a big nut to crack on if he was to try to take down all 183. So what he's trying to take down is, I don't know how many it is, 80 or 90, whatever that whatever this section is, section one. Section one goes from Golf Course Road and goes all the way east and connects up to Millstone. Um, and so we've got a connection on the west, connection on the east, and they're filling everything else in between. Part of this was our fault, if, if that's the right way to say it. That's we not, wanted, that's not the right way. We, part of this was our doing. We wanted the uh, 20 acres of legacy woods included as part of the section one plant. Well, if they start way over at Golf Course Road, and this section is way over here by mill. It's going to take a while before they ever get there to include it in the plat. So by doing this, they they knocked off. They checked a lot of boxes. One of which was multiple access points. And the fire chief was a little nervous about having one access point. They linked the woods to section one now, so we'll be able to get the dedication of the woods with section one. Um, and so what they needed to do was they needed to break out from the properties, this portion that they're buying. Um, in Sunbury, we call that a minor subdivision, but it really isn't, it's just a lot split. Um, and so uh, because of that, um, we've noodled this around internally as well. Um, this is an administrative, um, procedure. Uh, this is something that uh, Steve, Dave, uh, Bream, and I can handle administratively, but we wanted you all to see it. We wanted you to know what's going on. There's no action here before you. There's no approval needed from this commission tonight uh, other than maybe, uh, yeah, let, let's move forward with this. Let's get these houses going, kind of uh, nod and a wink and a and so forth. So um, it's it's here for informational purposes for you, so, so that you can see how Price Farms is. I'm sorry, Price Ponds is coming out of the ground and getting ready to getting ready to proceed. And uh, I think you all know, you yeah, council approved the mass excavation plan. I don't know if they've started moving dirt. I don't think so yet. But they're they're getting all their toys ready to uh, start moving some serious amounts of dirt here, beginning in the middle of October, I think. Um, so uh, we're getting uh, we're getting close. How far away from final plat of section one are we? I mean, months wise, a long way. Generally, uh, we um, we have the construction plans under review at this moment. I've sent out the, the sewer comments today. I hope to get to the street uh, water storm plans uh, tomorrow and Thursday. Uh, I'm sorry, tomorrow and Wednesday, uh, and get some comments out before I leave on Wednesday. Uh, so uh, those are coming along. The final plat tends to lag. Um, and we uh, uh, and uh, when they're ready to start selling lots, uh, then the, then the final plat usually comes in. But uh, they've probably got a year of construction, or maybe nine months of some serious construction before they might be ready to think about selling lots. So the final plat, you know, is probably six months away at the earliest. Would be a, a guess, best guess. Do you know uh, when your planning is to? Um convey the legacy woods to Sunbury? I know it says no later than when section one goes through the final platting process, but it could be tomorrow, right? Stand corrected, I don't believe that's part of the report he's doing that first one on it's part of the rezoning for the entire property. It's part of the rezoning. So, yeah, whether you're doing it or Romanelli's doing it, um, whether it's part of the plat, you know, so so Vince would sign off for his dedication or however that works. I don't know how that exactly will work, but it was supposed to be with the Section 1 plan. That's it, what I'm asking. We're doing a lot split to approve basically where Pulte Homes now owns this. Our agreement was with the original party who owned the land and that we entered into an agreement with on the rezoning. And that has to be represented in the, you know, the covenants or the deed restrictions or something yeah. that we receive that property yeah. as part of their conveyance from Romanelli to Pulte. Well, 
I just don't want to lose it in the details. It was that was a lot of work on a lot of people's part. Uh, it, we will not lose it in the okay. details. We are fully focused on this. Uh, just it is part of your exhibit. So. It is part of the lot split. Yeah. Okay. And I uh, just unsolicited kudos. The MHT is doing a great job with this. The, the plans are fantastic. They're responsive. Uh, they couldn't have gotten, uh, yeah, they're getting great service from their consultant. Okay. Great. Thank you for the head nod. Uh, we don't need to take action. Thank you very much for coming in tonight and listening. Um, anybody have anything for the applicant? All right. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. All right, we're going to breeze through this last part of the agenda. No visitors this evening. We had a meeting one month ago. Is there a motion for Greg Elliott has a motion. Second, I'll say Nick Riba. Discussion? Roll call. Uh, Mr. Elliott. Oop. Mr. Elliott. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, Mayor St. John. Yes. Mr. Gokenauer. Yes. Mr. Lawrence. Yes. Mr. Riba. Yes. And it's approved. Good deal. We're on to the zoning report. Uh, Mr. Piles provided this in email and also in printed form. Uh, uh, is there anything you'd like to highlight, Mr. Piles? Happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, we continue to make a little bit of progress on housing starts, and I think we'll be uh, probably catching up to 2019. It'll be a, a close race, but I think we may well get there. Uh, a lot of momentum in section 16 right now, and uh, they're, they're moving on. And other than that, I've got a couple enforcement letters going out tomorrow to uh, practice how I copy this because it kind of flips up and down on you. Um, but answer any questions you might have. <clears throat> I just saw a quick note, political signs. Is that an issue? Yes. Uh, political signs have been, yeah, it's it's been a very active um, situation. Uh, I've had to uh, have communications directly with a couple of the candidates. One kind of setting out and reminding them of the rules. Um, uh, I had to remove some signs that uh, were on close to right away, close to private property, but that property owner's policy is no political signs. Um, they recovered them from the back porch. They've been reused elsewhere in the community. Um, we put out on Facebook uh, a reminder of no, no political signs in the right of way. In residential areas, generally, if you're on the other side of the sidewalk, you're out of the right of way. Uh, still have a few lingering in uh, neighborhoods that are between the sidewalk and the curb. Um, I don't know if one day I'll just go and <laughs> do that four foot of change or, uh, or if I'll rely on the candidates to, they, they have been communicating with their volunteers, um, trying to get, uh, get the situation ratified and then most cases it is, but it's. Uh, I think we're in for uh, another active month of political signs and activity as it relates to uh, some races this fall. Real quick, let me add. Um, we were addressing issues in the right of way and like uh, athletic equipment and flagpoles and different things like that prior to the most recent, you know, influx of signs going up. So. Uh, council had taken a very serious look at this the services committee and more or less like it came down to a liability issue around like athletic equipment and it was no items are going to be in the right away um, any complaints that are filed we're going to follow up on uh, in terms of active enforcement us going out policing the streets every day it's just not feasible right now but we are getting 
a lot of complaints about, um, well, theirs is in the right of way and mine, and I had to ask for permission. So it's more or less like on the candidates to do their research, figure out where they can actually put it on private property because the village is not going to approve uh, anything in the right of way, including political signs, because it can introduce bias and subjectivity. Steve's got a really hard job with this. Um, I know just over the past two business days, he's probably taken, you know, five, six phone calls on this, including a couple from me, just on people following up with me on this topic. So thanks a lot for what you're doing. Um, I think our policy is really clear. I'm trying to play clear, I'm trying to play fair and uh, right. use the auditor's website to determine right of ways when I have to. Appreciate it, thank you. Anything else, Steve? Uh, no. The, um, at the end of your packet, it's also an informational um, lot split that's happening with uh, Savenko and the Magnolia Park. Magnolia Park. Um, they're they're doing two two splits of property that were related to your previous approvals. One for uh, Mr. Faber and the other one for the school. Again, uh, we wanted to make you aware that, that they are moving forward on those line adjustments and, and they'll be reviewed administratively. So, so Steve, did I misspeak? Did I, the first one? Yeah, did I, uh, did I, conf did I miss, mess them up? I think we determined that Magnolia was. Magnolia is definitely a, a boundary adjustment <coughs> administrative. Yeah, I think. Do we need to go back and ask the commission to approve the lot split for Pulte? For Pulte? I think we should. Yeah, that's a good idea. I apologize. I, I was thinking of the Magnolia Park when I gave that explanation that we were only presenting for informational purposes. I thought we wielded you quite a bit of power there to go out and approve these lots place. <laughs> like, oh, with the stroke of a pen, that's 142 acres to a lot of, a lot of land. Well, that's a clarification on the trigger of the Legacy Woods if we're going to approve it. I have clarification in ordinance as part of the rezoning. I'm very firm that, like, we've dotted our I's and crossed our T's. With yeah. we are going to get this prior to the platting of section one. I mean, I wrote it down word for word in the ordinance 2020 dot something or other. I feel good about it. You feel good about it? I do. Okay. Yeah, this will not slip. Okay. All right. Good deal. So then do we need to go back and approve? Would you like to make a motion? I'm asking before we I do need to go back to the so I then sure I'll make the motion to approve the multi last foot. Second. Second by Rick Riba. Discussion. Roll call. Mm, let's see. I'm back to the beginning. Uh Mayor St. John. Yes. Bill Yes. Mr. Lawrence. Yes. Mr. Riba. Yes. And Mr. Elliott. Yes. Thank you. Good thing you stuck around. <laughs> uh, now you're really officially approved. <laughs> All right. Uh, discussion, new business. I'm going to open it up, Mr. Gokenauer. No. Mr. Elliott. Nothing. Mr. Mr. Rival. No. Mr. Lawrence. No. None for me. Next meeting date, October 25th, 2021. Do we want to schedule a special meeting? We're getting into holiday time for code updates. We want to wait until we have a full. Yeah. You have a date in mind? I, I'm just thinking if we don't schedule it, we're going to get in the holidays and it's not going to happen. I agree with that. Okay. What are you thinking? Um, October 31st? Are you, sure. What did you say? October 31st? That's a Sunday. Yeah, the treat. It's trick or treat. That too. <laughs> uh, two weeks, I would think. Actually, I guess it doesn't even have to be two weeks. It'll be one week because there's really nothing for us to review. What are you um, thinking? What's the availability for here? For or we have we have to put a notice out for this, Steve. 
Right. We, yes. have to put in, we have to put so we would time. have to and it's a 24 hour 24 hours. Hours. so it could be next week i cannot do next week i'm sorry i, will, I can't do the following week i will not be here okay. we go the 18th Eighteenth. I can make it work. What do you guys say? Eighteenth. Mm -hmm. work. Six a.m. Mm -hmm. Six a.m. Yeah. I mean, oh, I'm all for that. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. What's that? He said six a.m. Joe can't do that. Were you joking? Monday. Serious? I could do Monday. At six a.m. Mm -hmm. You serious? I actually, it doesn't matter to me, but I don't. I mean, what about our professionals today? Yeah. <laughs> to be here at 6 a.m. Yeah, that would actually not work for me on that Monday. <laughs> well, for all Mondays. <clears throat> Monday evening or whatever would work for me, but not Monday morning, unfortunately. That Not that Monday morning. Hey, Parkinson's an early riser. You can be here anytime, any day, almost. What about the morning at 11? Can that be better okay. for you? I, I, I have to be at work at 7 a.m. So. Okay. <laughs> I could do the morning at 11. Yeah. Yes. You can't do the 11th, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, been... you can't do the 11th. That's right. Yeah. Well, no, so, that's a bad thing. Now we're, we're talking about 18 now. 18? Yeah. Yeah. 18. Is it a bad day for anybody? 18. I mean, there are no, none of them There's are no good. bad days. There's yeah. no bad days. There's no good ones either. Woke up. It's a good, it's a good day. <laughs> 18. 5 p.m. 5.30. Um, 5.30. So, is that too early, Joe? 5.30. I, I don't work Mondays. Work Fridays. What's that? I said I don't work Mondays. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Monday, 18th, 5.30 p.m. Thank you. Is the earlier help with all the professionals? Yeah, it's fine. As long as it's not in the morning that day, and I apologize about that. That's fine. Oh, don't uh, no. you guys. Oh, it's 6 a.m. We're trying to get Most all of our schedules lined up. Most of the day, happens that day, it doesn't. Right. Uh, 5.30 p.m. It's in Bream. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if he's in town, right? That's, that's the problem. I don't know. Yeah. It Move to adjourn. Second. Move. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Uh, is this for the <laughs> meeting? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, Ocean was. Uh, Rick Ryba, Ryba, Joe Gokenauer. Second. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Gokenauer. Yes. Mr. Lawrence. Yes. Mr. Riba. Yes. Mr. Elliott. Yes. And Mayor St. John. Yes. Okay. So Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, I thought that was, that was motion. <laughs> it was the motion to approve the meeting, the special meeting. No. Oh. Uh, do we need a motion to do the special meeting? I don't, I don't yeah, think so. Uh, we're, we're doing okay. right no. <laughs> Steve, how do you want to do the notebooks? You want us to give them back to you now? Um, um, yeah, if you could. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's switch it. Let's switch it.